Hello everyone, this is Faye here from Twilight Crafts and just a quick uh, demo video from the Happy Days uh, Coco Vanilla Studio uh, collection kit, which is our August subscription kit. And so I thought I'd just show you how I have used uh, the Jenny Wren stencil that comes in the kit to create a background. So we've made a colour swatch um, for the Distress Oxides to match colours with the collection. And so for this background, I started with the Seedless Preserves and then moved on to Worn Lipstick, Carved Pumpkin, Mustard Seed, and I'm just going to finish the bottom of the layout with Salvage Patina. And I use some blending brushes um, just to apply the ink through the stencil. Um, a few other things you'll need for this layout. I'm going to add some tone on tone detail using some fine line pens. And then I'm going to use a pricking mat. I've got this pricking mat from Pim Flare, just an A5 pricking mat and a little pokey tool uh, to be able to make holes in the inked areas. And I'm going to stitch using some basic embroidery thread. Again, tone on tone colours for that. So um, I'll move my inks out of the way and we'll just finish this background. So I started by um, working from the top of the layout and doing a half circle there. And then using the um, half of the stencil to do one half of the circle, flipping it round and doing the bottom half and did the two middle circles and then work out to the outer edge. And then again, fitting the whole circle in between the, the whole circles here to do the orange carved pumpkin. And again, with the mustard seed. So on the bottom of the layout, I'm just going to finish off by adding three semicircles in salvage patina. So I sometimes take off a little bit of the ink. This is a fairly new ink pad. So take off a bit of the ink onto the lid. And then just ink through. So you can use whatever colours you've got. Um, distress inks work well. But give a bit more of a translucent effect. This is, this is more opaque. The oxides... Um, give more of a coverage, I would say. Um, and it just builds up a really nice background to make your own scrapbook layout background. So just three along the bottom. There we go, nice and easy. So that finishes off um, the background in salvage patina so there is the finished background and that matches with the um, happy days collection so then um, to add some tone on tone doodling I've just got my fine line pens and it doesn't need to be neat but I'm just going to go and add A little bit of doodling to give these starburst circles a bit of definition, a bit of detail. And you can doodle as much or as little as you like. So I will finish that off camera, but I will um, carry on doodling. It's quite a nice thing to do in front of the TV. I'll do a couple more. I will do the whole circle on this one, I think. I'm going to add some stitching and some stenciling. And then yellow on the mustard seed. Now, that one doesn't show up very well and probably won't show up very well on the camera. You could add some black fine line doodling to add a bit of depth. So there's that one. And then for the um, stitching, you can decide how you do this, how you want to stitch. 
So I'm going to find um, the edge of the circle and I'm going to stitch in between the gap. And I'm not going to go the full length of the circle, but I'm going to put a hole there and maybe one there. And I'm going to do every other on this one. And I'm varying the lengths because this is going to be a long stitch. So I'm doing every other. I might do every circle. I might do every one. Let's see how it looks once I've stitched it. Let's go every, let's go every one as I've got the, but I'm varying the lengths of all the holes. Okay, one more. Right, so then my embroidery thread now, um, for the, the type of needle that you you want, I've just got embroidery needles. They are a little bit easier to thread, um, but any needle will do. I generally go for quite a thin one because I've already made the holes. You don't any, need anything too big. Um, oh, I need to get some orange thread for that one. So let's start on a yellow one over here. Now, and the one thing to say is you want to also think about where your photo is going to go because you don't want to spend lots of time stitching if you're going to have a photo covering all that lovely stitching work. So think about mapping out where you want your photo first and avoid stitching in that area. And because these are quite long running stitches, it's quite quick to do once you get going, but it's the kind of thing you can do sitting in front of the TV. So I thought I'd do a quick process video to show you and then I can photograph it and show what it looks like when it's finished. So cut your length of thread. Thread your needle. A nice crisp edge to the thread is often helpful. That's it. Pull it through. Make sure it's not all bunched up. That's it. Okay. So when I start off, I start off from underneath and pull it through. Now you can tie a knot um, to hold it in place or you can stitch it in place or you can put a piece of washi tape on the back. It's entirely up to you and then you're just going to do your running stitch. So if I do just a few stitches you'll, you'll see how it starts to look. So you're almost creating like a sunburst. I'm making sure that back doesn't pull through. I need to grab some washi tape to stick that in place. So you could use um, contrasting colours. I've decided to go um, tone on tone and match the colours of thread. I just do a couple more and then I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see what it's going to look like when it's done. And Debbie's also done a lovely layout like this with this same technique. It's worth putting in the effort with the stitching. I wasn't a big fan of stitching until I saw the effects you can get. And it's quite therapeutic stitching onto cardstock. 
So I'm going to do a couple more. And then I'll show you what it looks like. One more. So you can see I varied the lengths of the holes. And it gives you quite a nice effect. So let me hold that up to the camera so that you can see. Let it come into focus. There you are. So that's it. A nice and simple uh, background created with the stencil, um, some stitching and some doodling. And so other um, techniques that we have used with this scrapbooking uh, sub kit is to cut out uh, ink and cut out semicircles from the stencils. So here the black cardstock has got texture paste in, uh, through the stencil and then inked on the top. And then I made a range of semicircles with distress inks and oxides and cut those out as well and then raised them up on foam pad to create this layout. So that's another kind of inking technique. Lots of ephemera, floral ephemera tucked around there and the nice rainbow striped paper to map the photograph. And then this is another um, mixed media layout that we created um, using texture paste and just a stencil that I had. Any stencils will work. You can see it works really well through the Jenny Wren stencil, but any stencils you've got and then lots of watered down um, inks and oxides to create the background. All finished off with some floral ephemera and then the Jenny Wren cut file that was backed in the rainbow paper. And what I did for this one, I made sure that the rainbow paper was backed on the cut file first and then matched the colours. So we've got uh, chipped sapphire um, as the blue and then we go into a nice bit of salvage patina we go into crushed olive or peeled paint, works nicely. Then you've got the mustard seed. You've got carved pumpkin or ripe persimmon um, is the perfect orange to match. And then we go into worn lipstick and seedless preserves to match the pinks and purples. So definitely um, the colour swatch will help you match your inks to the colours in the kit. So I hope you enjoy working with the kit. Don't forget to post your layouts onto our Twilight Crop and Craft Facebook page because we do do a prize draw each month um, for our subscribers to win more Jenny Wren cut files. So thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.